Now at 7, we are tracking the latest as Barrel continues to inch closer to Texas. People across the state are bracing for impact. This is video out of Corpus Christi. People boarding up homes and businesses Saturday and stocking up on supplies. And right now, evacuation orders are in effect for Referio County. The same goes for visitors in Port Aransas who are being told to leave the island by noon today. And we have live team coverage this morning with three of our Ken's five weather team tracking barrel. Paul Morales is in Port Lavaca. Jeremy Baker is set up in Rockport and Maggie Lachlan is staying on top of this storm in the Ken's five weather center. So let's first let's get to Maggie for the latest on when and when when and where barrel will make landfall on the Texas coast. Maggie. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. So now at this moment, I'm going to show you where exactly barrel is right now, but barrel is expected to make landfall a little bit earlier than expected early tomorrow morning. So let's go ahead and pull up some of our graphics. I can, I can show you where barrel is headed again, hitting towards Brownsville and Corpus Christi early tomorrow morning. Heavy amounts of rain to be associated with the storm. But if you take a look here at our spaghetti models, these are our dynamic models showing that San Antonio really is on the west side of the impacts of the the storm so could get less than a tenth of an inch. I mean, really for San Antonio early tomorrow morning. So we're going to track this for you there. But of course, we've got Jeremy and Paul out there braving the storm for us as it starts to come in. So we want to check in with them. First, we'll go with Paul and Paul looks like it's a little breezy out there. Are you doing OK this morning? Oh, doing great, Maggie. Yeah, doing fine. It, you know, the breeze, by the way, I brought my handheld anemometer and facing kind of off to the north, northeast. It's showing about anywhere from five to 10 miles per hour. So winds are light now. Uh, the, the matter of fact, we've got a little bit of a shower. I just uh, just started just a second ago. So getting just a little wet here. But earlier this morning, the hotel here gave everybody this little piece of paper. Let me show you this. And it says, hey, everybody here at this hotel, you have got to evacuate except for the media crew. So they're taking it a little bit more serious here in Port Lavaca. I asked a few folks uh, this morning, hey, what'd you think about uh, having to leave the hotel? And the ones I talked to said, well, we we're going to leave anyway. Uh, you know, we're getting out of here. Uh, so now we'll just have to have a little bit of a waiting game. Really quick, though. I want to tell you now I'm not comparing th this storm barrel to Harvey, but I was at the exact spot when Harvey hit It was a 10 to 11 foot storm surge. All right, here's where Lavaca Bay is right here, right? And we've got a nice wall with Harvey, the water where I'm standing would be up to about my neck, about here, it's about 10 to 11 feet, and that's about a six foot difference here. So let's say that we did see a four foot storm surge here where I'm standing. It probably wouldn't even breach this wall. So there's, there should be a lot of difference between Harvey and Barrel. Uh, one thing to watch for though, one thing to watch is a little bit later on this afternoon, if barrel really starts cranking up, and especially tonight, there is a possibility uh, most of the really good computer models, they're all, every one of them, is saying that there's going to be intensification just before landfall. Now, how much intensification? That all depends, but it looks like the wind shear is going to relax. And the track by the National Hurricane Center right now is right across that bay. The track, I don't know if you can make it out on the other side of the land there, on the other side of Port um, of Lavaca Bay, but that's just about where the track should be. And even though it'll be a few miles, let's say it does keep on that track over there, it means a big difference for, for Port Lavaca because we'll be on the west side, the north and the east side. That's where you have the potential for tornadoes. That's where the bigger storm surge is and so it's going to be just a waiting game to see exactly where the track where it comes on shore and it could be in a big difference for the folks here in Port Lavaca. Uh, looks like barrel could still reach category one. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a little higher than that but I think we're going to be looking at a hurricane a little bit later on uh, this evening into the overnight and into tomorrow morning will look a lot different. Okay down the coast down uh, down around Rockport let's see if it's sprinkling on Jeremy. What's going on over there in Rockport, Jeremy? Yeah, well, it's not sprinkling here. You know, I'm jealous. You have a handheld anemometer. I have my own. Uh, 13 miles per hour. Yeah, here we go. 13.5. Not too bad here, honestly. A little change from last night, a little more breezy, but that's about it. 
the waves here, this is Little Bay, they're still lapping up against the rocks. Same here across Aransas Bay. The water looking a little more choppy, but still really pleasant morning out here. And we're about five feet off the water, so the storm surge that was predicted three to five feet here, even if it hit five feet, likely would not cover this pier where I'm standing this morning. And where people are fishing, plenty of dogs walking by with their owners, going out for a walk, enjoying the nice weather before things start going downhill. Now this morning, police say there are closures. The most important one is the 24-7 ER in both Rockport and also Portland. They have both closed today. So if conditions do go downhill quickly and if medical services have problems getting to people, you're going to have to keep that in mind if you do end up needing to call 911. So yesterday, people were preparing, and as we moved into town for the next few days, we saw plenty of people boarding up their windows, their doors, lots of trucks with plywood while driving into town. Of course, people filling up their cars with gas. And from what we could tell, there was no gas shortage, so nothing to worry about there. But for the most part, people were taking the precautions they thought were necessary, whether they were staying here to ride out the storm or they were skipping town. We're just keeping such a close eye on it. My husband's actually a pastor in town, so we have an entire church that's like waiting on our, you know, response of what we're going to do. And I'm actually in the process right now of um, getting food for the guys that are working and boarding up the windows and they're doing the sandbags and stuff because we're two blocks from the water. And where they're two blocks from the water, she said they would be affected by that storm surge. We're going to hear more from her later on today on Kent's 5 News at 530. Also, people are urged to sign up for the Code Red Emergency Services Alert. That alerts people immediately if first responders need to let them know of a medical emergency or some kind of a weather emergency. To sign up for that, all you have to do is text the word Aransas, like the county, to 99411. That's Aransas to 99411. Reporting live from Rockport, Jeremy Baker, Kens 5. Good information. Thank you, Jeremy. The state's medical response team is already deployed ahead of barrel. The Southwest Texas Regional Advisory Council, also known as STRAC, deploys ambulances, doctors, and mobile medical units all around the state. From active, active shooter situations to COVID to hurricanes, STRAC is always working to make sure the state is ready, working with the Texas Department of Emergency Management. The Texas Emergency Medical Task Force, or the EMTF, is strictly disaster medicine. When we deploy people out the door, we deploy uh, critical care ICU ER nurses, and we deploy uh, critical care or uh, ER physicians along with our paramedics. Already, NICU and complex medical patients from the coast have been moved to San Antonio hospitals. And Governor Greg Abbott directed the State Emergency Operations Center to increase its readiness to level two. It's currently in effect this morning. More state resources will be ready to respond, including up to 1,000 National Guard personnel, up to 200 search and rescue personnel, plus helicopters, boats, and other equipment. Texans in the Gulf Coast are starting to evacuate. And we'll have continuing coverage of Barrel through the weekend, so be sure to tune in. Tune in. You can also follow updates online right now at Kens5.com and the Kens5 mobile app. Well,